Where do you sort of posit yourself now after a full decade in filmmaking? <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like it took me um, a long time to kind of become um, more comfortable um, as a filmmaker and to really kind of develop my voice, I think, as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it took longer than it takes for most people, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it took me about 10 years, I guess, um, to, to kind of feel like I'm working in a, a consistent um style or, or consistent um, kind of vision. Um, I think for me the kind of the set environment um, does influence the work in, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So um, specifically with Murmur, like with my first feature, um, I was thinking about, you know, how, how I wanted, you know, how I wanted to shoot and what kind of a set environment I wanted to have and, and how that would influence um, the work overall. Um, so, uh, because of, you know of, of doing so many shorts, I'd I'd kind of developed um, a way of working that I, I felt was you know a, a, the kind of best compromise for me um, that allowed me to to work in the way that I wanted, and so that that kind of you know involves having a, a very small crew mm -hmm. um, and you know being being kind of mobile and, and agile, um, almost like a documentary unit. Um, and I kind of developed that in my shorts, and, and we took that forward into the feature. Um, and you know that that allows me, you know, kind of a, a freedom to adapt, you know, as, as we're shooting to kind of adapt to our environment. So a lot of the time we we were shooting in you know real mm -hmm. environments, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, places that were open to the public, or you know, places that had you know an unpredictable element, um, and by keeping you know the crew really small and agile um we were you know able to to adapt to things on the fly and and i was able to to kind of look at the space around me and and discover things that you know i couldn't have thought of necessarily at the script stage um and and that's that's how i like to work i don't like to work um you know when you have a huge crew and there's a lot of time pressure and everything has to be mm -hmm. you know strictly monitored in terms of how much time you're spending on each scene um definitely get a sense of uh, the micro level and the minimalist <laughs> right. uh elements that you really stick to um mm -hmm. to uh yeah almost a fly on the wall tighten it mm -hmm. you get a sense of that right. um so so how did it work for funding for Murmur? Like, mm -hmm. I imagine with the, pre, especially the last three short films that you, ha that you made, there's a very strong DNA. So it's perhaps um, easier to get financing bodies on board. Was that the case for, for this? Were you able to say, hey, it's sort of like, it's got one foot in docu yeah. Donkey World, but then <laughs> potentially appeal to, to different funding bodies mm -hmm. in different ways. So, um, you know, for our our main funding source was Telefilm Talent to Watch, which is you know the first time feature um, yeah. film fund basically it used to be called Micro Budget. Um, so you know, for that application, you know, I I, I had to write a traditional script, and um, you know, and that was a very valuable process for me. Um, and and we did, and you know, we did shoot. You know, basing everything off of of, of the fictional script. Um, but but was I was of, curious about how having a still frame, the four three, how that sort of like hinders or complicates performance when you have um, sentient beings that are not human beings. So, so I was curious as to was that a, like a five obstructions for you? Was it a deliberate choice to sort of like make it super difficult for yourself? <laughs> well, it was definitely. Um, something my DP and I talked about was, was having a restriction mm -hmm. in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I often like to have a restriction because I feel like it, it makes you think about things in ways that you wouldn't have thought about them otherwise. Um, it, you know, it forces you to approach um, approach it in, in a way that you might not have thought of. Um, so that's kind of fun for me. Um, so yeah, our restriction was that the camera won't move. Um, but it also kind of fits the aesthetic of the film in, in the sense that, you know, it's a quiet film, there's a lot of stillness, there's a lot of, um, you know, the main character is alone a lot of the time. Um, so, 
you know, I, I feel like aesthetically and thematically it, it worked. Um, and yeah, but it was also fun in the sense that it was a restriction for us. So it made us kind of um, be creative, um, coming up with ways to make things work. But you're right, with animals, um, you know, we film a lot of animals in the, in the movie. So, you know, that can be challenging. Um, but I was, I was very open to um, kind of the action, if you can call it that moving in and out of the frame mm -hmm. um that's something that i find pleasing when i'm watching a film is you know when you you, you see a piece of the action but it, it moves and, and then maybe perhaps it comes back but it kind of activates like a different part of your brain because it's like you you're wondering for a second what's going on over there you know it, it kind of activates you know your imagination in the sense that you're you're wondering what what the character or, or the animal and with is, the f is doing off screen. And with the four three, what's interesting is that you're you're sort of like um, forcing the viewer to sort of like look at the different points of the 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 four edges, if you will. Right. And yeah. films tend to not really want to go there, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we were very heavily interested in the edges. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, so I saw this with an audience, and so. Not that I have a trained eye or experience, but I see 500 films a year. Right. <laughs> so I know where this is potentially going. But what I found interesting about an audience participation experience is that my level of dread uh, was matched at other junctures for other... I was, I was very keen as to how people were experiencing this film. And... Um, so I was curious as to how you sort of like... Are, do you curiously... Um, watch this film and sort of like look at how the audience might might understand the uh, the 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 true sense of addiction and where it's going. Do you, do, was that something that you were curious about afterwards or thought of proactively during um, the making? I mean, I'm always I'm always considering. I think more so at the edit stage, certainly considering what the audience will be um, feeling and mm -hmm. interpreting. Um, I think yeah, that comes at into it mostly for me during the edit. Um, you know, I, I edited the film myself, and um, so at that at that point, I think, yeah, I am I am thinking a lot about, um, you know, what what information is essential to get across. What information do we want to leave out um, to, you know, perhaps you know, allow the audience to to engage in an imaginative way about, mm -hmm. about you know backstory and. Um, and things like that with the with the main character, um, and yeah, I mean, when we first watch the film with an audience, it's always a very interesting experience. You know, you don't you don't know what to expect, especially that first time. You know, the first, when we screened at TIFF for the first time, um, you know, just just hearing people the way that they're breathing or the way that they're you know the where they're laughing or you know where they're crying. Um, you know, these things are always you know, fascinating mm -hmm. for me to, mm -hmm. to see what points of the film the audience is engaging in and, and did you expect them to engage at that point or is it somewhere, you know, sometimes the audience will be laughing at a, at a place I wasn't expecting them to laugh and, and I always, yeah, I'm fascinated by it. There's a bridge between the viewer and a very isolated uh, gray uh, sky world, so I was, mm -hmm. I was wondering if that was something that you were thinking about overtly during the writing stages. Mm -hmm. Um, well, in terms of the kind of, you know, more lighthearted moments or the, you know, the comedic type of moments, um, some of those I think were, were thought about at the script stage. I always like to, um, you know, my films are generally pretty dark overall, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> um, but I, I like to have, you know, moments of, of levity and, and moments of, yeah, yeah, moments of reprieve for the audience. and. And I feel like, you know, that that's more of a true-to-life experience, you know, for, for the character and for having empathy with the character that, um, you know, in, in life, even when you're struggling or going through a very dark period, you know, there are moments of, of tenderness or moments of humor or, um, you know, their life goes up and down a lot. So I, I like to kind of incorporate that kind of realism in, into the film and, and you know, for instance, the, the wine bottle um, mm -hmm. scene, you know, that was something we definitely had at the script stage and, and that I, um, it's something I, I took from real life, from witnessing, um, you know, a, a family member, you know, engaging in, in uh, <laughs> um, 
struggling to open a, a corked wine bottle and and it was something that was both very dark but yeah. also very funny yeah um and you know both you know in real life and, and what i you know the way that i intended it in the script so mm-hmm. um yeah i'm definitely drawn to you know dark stories but stories that also you know incorporate kind of dark humor and and uh you know things from real life that i've i've witnessed that um have been you know both kind of emotionally um you know engaging but all but also funny mm-hmm. <laughs> so you have a short that sort of like resembles certain, yes. there's certain yeah. characteristics that are yeah it's almost an homage to that short yeah, and an homage exactly. like they're sort of like speaking to one another but yeah. um were you were you looking into discussing other things outside of addiction and mm-hmm. and sort of like embedding the film with 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 I don't know like just daily functions of the profession like Darden totally. yeah definitely um, yeah that's definitely something that that uh, we worked with up at the script stage um, in terms of um, the main character Donna you know in, engaging or um, you know interacting with these kind of uh, authority figures mm-hmm. in her life or, or professional kind of authority figures um, and just that she you know she seems to be unable to, to make a connection with these people and um, unable to, to communicate um, so yeah that was definitely a, a theme that I that I was working with you know early on and, and something that I, I felt was very important for the character that um, she's you know she's struggling to make connections in her life that's you know that's kind of the basis for the character um and because you know she's become so isolated from you know from friends and family because of her behavior Mm -hmm. um all the only people she has left to kind of interact with in the film are, are these kind of professional interactions which you know are innately you know cold and clinical and and and, yeah begin with so it's kind of lack of um, warmth Exactly. So it's kind of a, a sad situation, you know, for a, for a person to find themselves in where, you know, this is the only human interaction she really has left are these kind of cold clinical interactions. Um, and then on top of that, she's she's also unable to, to connect with these professional people who are, you know, not her friends or family anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, in addition to that, she's not even able to really properly communicate with them. And, um that's kind of why we made the decision to 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 just focus on on her face and her reaction um, during those those scenes and not really show the uh, the kind of what's outside the box yeah, yeah. Um, because you know we wanted to emphasize that she wasn't making a connection there mm-hmm. isn't a back and forth between them there's almost a Charlie Brown world almost <laughs> yeah. she's that isolated from uh, from uh, not reality but um, but yeah certain uh, behavioral norms in society mm-hmm. in a larger society and what, what what's fun about a film like this is as you're going forwards um, in terms of a viewer is that you you think a lot about the backstory you think about the character and how mm-hmm. you might have dressed this actress in, in terms of her mannerisms and how she looks and how she tugs away at an electronic cigarette and <laughs> stuff like that you think about how did she get to this space you know um, and yeah, the brutality again of of, of trying to connect with family and mm-hmm. and that not being an option um, mm-hmm. that's available. The setup of the film is we're we're in ca- we we find ourselves close to cages, enclosed office spaces. We're thinking about blocked passages, mm-hmm. perhaps blocked arteries. She does mm-hmm. suffer some health. Uh, she ha- she does have some health issues. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, was this uh, again? Was this something that? that was tagged on from the beginning the 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 idea of this title yeah we did have the title um in place pretty early on um it came about while i was writing the script Mm -hmm. um so yeah it came through the writing of the script i guess um and basically i I liked i liked the the title murmur because um the the word has you know more than one meaning you know and I think several, you know, of the meanings apply to to the film. So um, I wanted to give this um, physical. I wanted a physical connection between um, between Donna, the main character, and the dog Charlie that she adopts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, beyond an emotional connection, I wanted there to be like some sort of physical connection between them. And um, the the dog is kind of 
uh, you know, based around a, an elderly dog that I adopted at one point. And, and you know, when, when my elderly dog passed away, it was from heart disease. And, uh, you know, my dog had a heart murmur and had congestive heart failure. So that was kind of the, the ailment that I naturally gave to the dog at mm-hmm. the home. And, and, and um, I decided to give a heart murmur also to Donna, the main character. Um, and so that was kind of like this, you know, this physical connection between them that I that I wanted to have. Um, and also just, you know, it's another way for, for Donna, the main character, to kind of relate to Charlie, the dog. You mm-hmm. know, she see, could see his life declining and, and his, you know, the end of his life approaching. And, and she can also, through that, see the end of her life approaching you know she's not imminently going to pass away or anything like but that she's but she's contemplating it yeah she's like, thinking about like, it um being kind of confronted with your own mortality mm-hmm. um so i think part of that you know in the film part of what she's struggling with is being confronted with her mortality and, and being confronted with the idea of you know growing older alone and, and these types of things um so the heart murmur was part of um why I chose that as the title um and I guess the other reason would just be the more kind of literal Mm -hmm. meaning of the word murmur which you know is to kind of speak but not be understood or to mumble or um to to quietly attempt to communicate but not be able to so that kind of just plays back to Donna being unable to communicate with her family and, and with the kind of professionals in her life and and ultimately you know reaching for a connection anywhere she can but um you know, failing to make those those kind of human to human connections. Mm-hmm. And- hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.